Okay, if we look at the top of the page, it says rationalizing denominators involving radical expressions. Now, you see in answer or questions one and two, the denominators are a monomial, but when you flip to the back, four, five, and six all have binomial denominators. So a radical plus a number or a number plus a radical. Um, so we're going to learn, we've already learned basically how to do one and two. It's just some harder math but we're going to focus on the back side when it's a binomial. So I just want to go over again when a fraction is in simplest radical form. That only happens when the only radical symbol, cube root, square root, fourth root, when you have the radical only in the numerator. You cannot divide by a radical. It's irrational. So we don't want an irrational denominator, we want a rational denominator. So go ahead and circle all of those that are in simplest form. So this first one, okay, radical 6 over 4, that is in simplest form. There's no radical in the denominator. Here I have a denominator of radical 5, so that's not in simplest form, because you would have to multiply by radical 5 over radical 5. So therefore the third is not in simplest form, because that's 5 radical 3. 2 radical 3 over 5, that's in simplest form. And then radical 3 over radical 8 would not be in simplest form. So when we eliminate the radical, Okay, we really are multiplying by 1. Remember that because anything divided by itself is 1. So with 18 divided by radical 6, I would multiply by radical 6 over radical 6 to get 18 radical 6 over 6. Doing that produces the perfect square. We're not showing it, but when you multiply radical 6 times radical 6, you're really getting the square root of 36, which is 6. And then you always need to simplify if possible. Can you divide 18 by 6? Yeah, that quotient would be 3, so I have 3 radical 6. So again, we've already done questions like this before. It's just now, instead of having just a monomial, in the numerator, we now have a binomial. So why don't you go ahead and just start, for instance, in example number one, I would start by multiplying by radical 3 over radical 3, and then in this one, what would I multiply by to rationalize it? Radical 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply both the numerator and denominator by those radicals. So in question number one, I have radical 3 times 1, which is 1 radical 3, or just radical 3. Remember, you can't multiply two radicals unless they're both radicals. Uh, if not, you just write the product. In this case, they are both radicals. So radical 5 times radical 3 would be radical 15. And then in the bottom, radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9, but we just write 3. I'm going to remove my final answer, your final answer as well, shouldn't have the 1 in it. So then looking at the final answer, can you divide radical 3 and radical 15 by 3? No, so it's done. Good. Number 2, um, 4 radical 12 times radical 2 is going to be 4 square root of 12 times 2 is 24 minus... 6 times radical 2 is 6 radical 2, all over 2. So at this point, you can divide both 4 and 6 by 2. So let's go ahead and divide out the 4 over 2. So this would actually be 2 radical 24 minus 6 divided by 2, 3 radical 2. So take a moment and simplify. So when you look to reduce the square root of 24, the largest perfect square factor is 4. And you can still use your blue tables, good, your blue charts. You can use those on quiz number 2. 
You take the square root of the perfect square, which is 2 times the 2 out front, you end up with 4 radical 6 minus 3 radical 2. Because the radicals do not have the same number underneath, which was your radicand, we can't subtract. You can only add or subtract like radicals. So 4 radical 6 minus 3 radical 2. Before we go on to the back, I want to ask you, or have you take a look at the same example. So 4 radical 12 minus 6 over radical 2. Could I also, instead of multiplying by radical 2 over radical 2, could I multiply by radical 8? In the question above, radical 2 times radical 2, was the square root of 4? 4 is a perfect square. Okay, so I got rid of the radical. That's what I wanted to happen. 2 times 8 is the square root of 16, which is also a perfect square. So I end up with square root of 16 all over 4 radical 96 minus 6 radical 8 when you actually reduce. Square root of 16 is 4. So this is 4 radical 96 minus 6 radical 8 all over 4. Largest perfect square factor of 96, does anyone know? Ninety-six breaks down into four, sixteen times six. Look how this is starting to match that radical. Um, minus eight is four times two, which is matching that one. All over four, so this is really four times four, which is sixteen radical six minus six times two. 12 radical 2 all over 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. You do. The whole point of me just showing you that is you can multiply by 1 in the form of whatever radical divided by whatever radical as long as this is a perfect square when you multiply. So when you look at the back though, I realize this is a note sheet, but I have a question for you. So the example is 15 over the square root of 5 minus 2. Do we use the same process? So the same process would be multiplying by what? Radical 5? Just radical 5 or radical 5 minus 2? Just radical 5? So let's try that. If I multiply by radical 5 over radical 5, I get 15 radical 5 over, well, radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. The radical is gone. That's good. But what happens when you multiply 2 times radical 5? It becomes 2 radical 5, and we still have a radical. So the answer is no. We have to use a different process. So think about it for a moment. I'm going to give you two minutes to, to discuss with someone close to you. So radical 5 minus 2. How, what would I multiply by to get rid of the radical in the bottom? Discuss. So in order to get the radical to go away, I would multiply by the same expression. So radical 5, and instead of being a minus 2, we multiply by the expression that has a plus sign. Because you only have to do the first and the last because those outer and inner cancel out. So we multiply by the conjugate. So I want you to make a note. Um, radical 5 minus 2 and radical 5 plus 2 are conjugate. Just as a side note before going back to writing on the page, the conjugate of 5 minus radical 3 would be 5 plus radical 3. The conjugate of 1 minus radical 2 is 1 plus radical 2. The conjugate of negative 1 minus radical 3 would be negative 1 plus radical 3. 
Now when I distribute, it makes it really easy in the bottom. Radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. I don't have to do this outer and inner because they're going to cancel out. Remember, outside is 2 radical 5, inside is negative 2 radical 5, which cancels out. Negative 2 times positive 2 is 4, so it becomes over 1. So we just have to distribute up top. So 15 times radical 5 is 15 radical 5, plus 15 times 2 is 30. So we end up with 15 radical 5 plus 30 over 1, which is 15 radical 5 plus 30. Or, remember you could see the order switched. Either way is fine. You just typically see it like this the most. So the steps. To rationalize, the first thing you want to do is find the conjugate of the denominator. That's only when you have a binomial denominator, so two terms. And then we multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate. And of course, last is simplify if possible. So in number four, we want to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Remember, the only thing you're changing is that addition to subtraction. The expression stays exactly the same. So five minus three, or five minus radical three, five minus radical three, here, radical two plus one, radical two plus one. We're just changing it to the opposite symbol. And then the last one, would be 2 radical 3, if I just change the symbol, minus 1. So if you start with just that on your test or upcoming quiz, you'll get some partial credit. Now we just have to go through and multiply the numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. 4 is an easy case because it's a monomial times binomial. So when you multiply the nu um, numerator times numerator, you get 30 minus 6 radical 3. Remember, from the warm-up, from the question above, you only have to do the first and the last. So 5 times 5, 25 minus radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. You could write the square root of 9 first, but then you have to simplify it. So subtracting, we've got 30 minus 6 radical 3 all over 22. Can you divide 30 and 6 by 22? No. However, I can't divide, but all three of these numbers are divisible by what? Two. So we can divide everything by two. 30 divided by two, we get 15. So it's 15 minus 6 divided by 2, 3 over 22 divided by 2, 11. You can only divide out a common factor if all three terms are divisible. If all three are not divisible, you have to leave it. Number five, so they do get harder, or not necessarily harder, but longer as we go. The bottoms are always going to be quick. So in the denominators, radical two times radical two is two. It's always going to be minus because you're doing negative times positive. Two minus one, which is one. In the numerators, it's a full foil because they're not special cases. So radical two times radical two is two. Outside, radical 2 times 1 is 1 radical 2. Distributing 4 times radical 2, we've got 4 radical 2. 4 times 1 is 4. Now, since this is over 1, I don't have to write the denominator anymore. So let's just combine the numerators. 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 radical 2, 4 radical 2 is 5 radical 2. We've got 2 radical 3 times 2 radical 3, which is 4 times 3. Or you could write 4 radical 9. Good. It is 12. Outside and inside are going to be exactly the same because you're multiplying the same two terms. So outside is negative 2 radical 3. Inside is negative 2 radical 3. 
negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And the bottom, though, we just have the first and the last. And we already did 2 radical 3 times 2 radical 3 above, and that's 12, minus 1 times 1, 1. So up top we have 12 plus 1, which is 13, negative 2 radical 3, negative 2 radical 3 is negative 4 radical 3, all over 11. Can't do any reducing, can't do any dividing, that means that's done.